Hi, this is Lizette Leon and I am One Smart Nurse. And before you continue to watch this vlog, please read the disclaimer in the description below. Today I'm gonna to talk about um, two things, heat exhaustion and heat stroke, also known as sunstroke. And this is part two of my summer series. And last week I spoke about sunburns. Today I'm speaking about uh, two other things that are closely related to uh, sunburns. Uh, usually somebody may start out with a sunburn and then proceed to getting either heat exhaustion or heat stroke. And um, sometimes you don't need to be, uh, you don't need a sunburn to get heat exhaustion or heat stroke. But let's begin. When it is hot outside, your body cools itself by sweating. The body cools itself as the sweat evaporates from your skin. But if you are overexposed to heat or if you're doing some sort of physical activity that is particularly strenuous, your body loses its ability to cool itself properly. What are some causes? Uh, one of them is a loss of water and electrolytes through sweating. And actually that's the main cause and it is a result of either hot, sunny, or humid weather. It can also be uh, physical exertion uh, in hot weather, it could, which could be work related, or if you're an athlete, that could be uh, problematic for you. Uh, also, uh, the elderly and children have an impaired uh, body temperature regulating system because of their age and they have uh, difficulty cooling themselves when it's hot or keeping themselves warm when it's very cold. Also, certain medications or drugs such as ecstasy, cocaine, or other kinds of amphetamines can cause a rapid rise in body temperature. Some of the symptoms include nausea, dizziness, irritability, uh, thirst, weakness, high body temperature, excessive sweating, uh, a decrease in your urine output, confusion, vomiting, and uh, many times people complain of muscle cramps, which is often related to uh, low blood sodium and potassium that you lose from sweating. Now, heat and elderly um, is problematic because the elderly are less likely to drink enough fluids or sense the significant changes in the temperature around them. Um, when it comes to heat in kids, babies and young children are very sensitive to extreme heat. So keep them cool, make sure they're very well hydrated before you even take them uh, out into the heat and don't ever leave them in the car even with the windows open. In terms of your pets, the same thing. Never leave them in the car, even with the windows open, and always, always make sure they have fresh water every single day. Okay, what are the treatments for heat exhaustion? Well, one of the things you could do is to keep an eye on uh, the, the temperature outside. Once it hits over 91 degrees, you need to start taking precautions. So go to a cool area where there's a fan or where there's air conditioning or a cool shade. Remove layers of clothes. And you can either fan yourself, use some sort of a fan or a, a wet towels. That will help cool you. Um, if you're experiencing dizziness, it may be related to a low blood pressure. Uh, so uh, lay down and put your feet high up, okay? Now, the next thing is you want to drink plenty of water or a sports drink, but you don't want to drink them very fast. Always drink them slowly because if you drink them too fast, there's a shifting of fluids in your body that can take place and water 
can be retained in your brain causing cerebral edema. That is a big dangerous uh, problem and you don't want to go there. Uh, let's see what else can you do. If you have any symptoms such as vomiting and it persists, make sure you get medical attention because it could be that you are progressing to a heat stroke, which is also known as a sunstroke. It is a medical emergency. Oftentimes, there is a high body temperature of 103 degrees or higher. This is called hyperthermia without a fever. This is not the same as a fever. It's hyperthermia. The skin will often feel hot, is red, and you may or may not have a dry or moist skin. It depends on how dehydrated you are. You may have a rapid and a strong bounding pulse and you may feel like you're going to lose consciousness and you may very well lose consciousness. So if you feel like you're going to lose consciousness, call 911, get to a cool area. If you're with somebody that is having these symptoms, call 911, move them to a cool area, cool the person down with cool cloths or a cool bath. Do not give them fluids if they're having a heat stroke. What are the risk factors? Again, it's usually somebody that's wearing dark, heavy padded clothing and are overdressed. Again, these are people who are often working in extreme heat environments and uh, or are, are physically active like an athlete. Um, also, risk factors include somebody that may have a high percentage of body fat, uh, somebody that may already be dehydrated, and um, you know that's why you don't want to wait until you are thirsty before you start to drink fluids. When you know you're going to be in some place very warm, start drinking your fluids to get your body ready. If the person has a fever already um, before they go out because they're ill, then they're more prone to develop heat stroke if they go out into a hot environment. Also, if they're on uh, beta blockers, which are cardiac medications, or an antipsychotic medication, uh, and also if they are um, drinking a lots of caffeine or have had plenty of alcohol because they are both dehydrating. And that's all I have to say about heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Uh, remember, heat stroke, which is also known as sunstroke, is a medical emergency. Please uh, make comments below. Let me know what kind of videos you want to see and I'll be happy to make them for you. And if you have any questions regarding today's vlog, please uh, make them below. And don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button before you leave, and join me again for part three in our summer series. Thanks again, and I'll be seeing you soon. Bye-bye.